So what are you making? Uh, uh, well, I was lids. going to do lids, but I was going to start by making a, a, a teapot, so I can make a lid to a teapot. Um, So this, yeah, this one is the side handle of individual teapots. And this clay out of the freezer feels like I've forgotten to put the sand in it. Incredibly smooth and fine, <laughs> which I'm sure can happen. I've got a, a batch of clay that's settling at the moment which needs to go out in the dryers. And I can't remember where I'll put the sand into that one. But if I refer to the clay mixing record book, I should have written it down there if I have done it. Yes. I tend to buy the sand in one tonne batches, and I'm not using a huge amount these days. Um, and I get round to ordering some more and find that the place I ordered it before no longer exists. Or has been taken over by um, this one company, I think it's a Belgian company, Sibelco, that seems to be buying up all the clay pits as sand pits. And um, you know, they don't want to deal with small people, so sending out a ton of sand is um, not what they want to do. They want you to have 10 tons of sand. And for some reason, they don't send out if you. If you want another pallet, it's always it's sort of a ton and a quarter. It's not a ton, so you can get that on the pallet. Um, right, so I've thrown this with the rim twice the thickness that it needs to be because I'm going to divide it with the blunt end of the quill. Pushing that in slightly at an angle so it, it doesn't just cut a groove, it actually sets, starts to open it up. So I can then put my finger on the inside and push that down. And as this is going to have a simple uh, sitting in the lid, which you need to have a low centre of gravity, therefore that flange has got to be curved. One of them, uh, which has got the um, the pivot in the twelve and a half percent hole, because these have got two holes in them. One is the equal ratio one, one's the twelve and a half one, and it's got rust in the kind of undone. So you can tell that if you put them together, can't you? Because both ends will meet. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the idea is you can, like the expansion rule. You can use them to match things that are uh, um, really fun. Put that in there. Cut the thread for cutting off. This is a very small teapot, it's very special.
so for this one it's simply going to be small lid. I have a button of clay like so and then I press down to leave the clay for the knob. the other end to judge and being too big we then use the thread cut that down to correct size cut under so it's st standing on a bit about the same diameter as the base of the knob and when you cut these off you have to catch them and that's where there's no excess clay there and no fiddling about to be done but because it's got that downward curve it'll have a low centre of gravity and it will sit in there even when it's tipped up to the point past the point teapot would be empty. So this is going to have side handle. Mind me that I've got clay test to go and just kill this pot here and these bowls. Uh, Tibetan clay. Somebody brought them quite a while ago from Tibet. And I've not got around to putting them in the kilns here. They may not go to stone my temperature, so I'm only going to put one bowl in this time. Um, and thinking about that teapot made out of the squares. It reminds me that the um, Tibetan potting is very interesting. Well, some of you may have seen the Tibetan bit of Tibetan film I've got. Because they, they, 
that obviously don't use a wheel. The pots are um, put together with slabs of clay, which they don't roll out, they beat out with a wooden hammer. Um, and this is a different So, can't cut this off with thread because there's no middle bit, so the thread will go all over the place. But I just cut it with a Pokemon quill. So, so there we have a lid and a handle, so now we just need a spank. The uh, throwing with the quill inside has the added advantage to that it smooths out any throwing rings so that um, the clay seems less likely to twist as it vitrifies. always dry more quickly from the pot. So often with these, um, when it's dry to a certain stage, I put the spout and the handle inside the pot so that it dries at the same rate, otherwise you have to wrap them up separately. Okay, so that's that very simple, straightforward lid, but when I was thinking about your, what looked like you were making a storage <laughs> jar the other day, with that was a lid that would sit in Shallow bowl and the, the shallow bowl of the lid always looks deeper when you turn it upside down. And then I've left this thick rim and I just use my thumbnail to cut down so as to leave a certain gallery so that that little bit will fit inside the pot. It's a good idea to have a slope on that, it'll fit much better than just having it straight up. And often on these smaller ones, I make them so that they are finished here on the wheel. throw these and they'll cut them off flat and then they'll put them back on the wheel and put the knob on them. Um, maybe I'm just lazy but I might do it all the okay. So they wear that. And you can, again, if it's, I mean, the, the idea of that is on a storage jar, it covers the hole, so in your dusty kitchen, 
you don't get the dust form in. You, you can do a lid that fits in on the, that sort of um, gallery, um, but again, it's not a good one for dusty kitchen. Books. Go on the variation, but then you're sort of covered with the basics. Then you've got that ginger mm -hmm. jar type thing, which is just an upturned bowl on top of um, a flange that's standing up. <laughs> 